And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Barons is a new game from Cambridge Games. In Cambridge Games, they come in these plastic containers, as you can see here, which really isn't the best way to store a game, but hey, it's cheap, and I guess the costs are passed on to you. But this game has been getting quite a bit of buzz. It's a strategy card game for two to six players, and it is uh, based on the idea of using cards for multiple things. And so let's take a closer look at the game. It's very interesting, and it's, well, it's, pretty, it's pretty cool to look at. Take a look. Each player starts with a castle in the middle of the table. In my set, I got this evil castle, or you can have the fairy tale princess castle. Interestingly enough, the rule book showed two other pictures of castles, but I didn't get those. There's four decks of cards involved in this game. A pasture yellow deck, a green forest deck, a blue river deck, and a red mine deck. Each of these decks uh, deals with something different. They all have their own subtleties, like red is about high volume production, green's flexibility and interaction, blue is infrastructure and diversity... Oh, I got those mixed up, blue and green. And then yellow is actions and synergy. Well, whatever. Either way, at the beginning of the game, each person starts with one land on each side of their castle. You can see the colors are marked there for ease of play. And then players are going to draw a couple cards to start the game. And then players take your turn. Now, taking a turn is pretty simple. You only have three things that you can do, or three parts of your turn. The first thing you do is you can play actions or use special abilities. Now, there's going to be a lot of the different cards that are action cards, and you can tell what they are by the fist in the corner. Uh, and there are some buildings, and like, for example, the port here. If you have this building in front of you, there's a little fist here, and so you can use that action. So you can play as many actions as you can afford, because a lot of these actions will have costs here. For example, uh, this prayer here costs one blue, population boom costs one yellow, Valley of Harvest costs one yellow. If, so, for example, if this was my hand, I could play Population Boom for its action, which is place a card face down as a land. It doesn't count as my playing a land for the turn. And I would discard one of my other yellow cards to pay for it. So, obviously, if you don't have the different colored cards to pay for it, then you can't play them. Now, so you can play as many actions as you want. Then, and this is the critical part of the game, you can play a land or a building. Playing a land simple. Just choose a card from your hand and place it somewhere connected to the rest of your cards to form land. And as the game progresses, you will be adding different lands of different colors. It's up to you. However, you may want to build a building. There are many different buildings in the game. They have this little building symbol up here. And these buildings, when you play them, you can play them wherever you want, and they'll give you different benefits. For example, the guild hall here. Buildings cost you one less card of your choice to build. So once this building's out, it's easier to get other buildings. This uh, enemy knights cannot attack my other buildings. They have to go for the city wall first. If the mill is next to a river, like here, when I tax two pastures, I get three. Now, you may not understand what all these things mean, but realize there's lots of different buildings in the game. And as you play the game, you'll find that there's the different buildings are in the different decks. So you have to figure out which decks, you know, you, you'll get better as the game progresses because you'll know which decks to find cards in. And so you'll be adding buildings to your land. There's also some of these that are not really buildings, but they're special lands that you can put out. For example, the forest brook can count as a forest and a river. So I would probably place that here, or like the wetlands here, it's a river and a pasture. And probably place that one here, and then this abundant isle counts as everything. So that's pretty cool. So you have these different lands that you can play. So first you have your actions. Then you can play one land or one building per turn. You can see, obviously, this has been many turns into the game. Then you can tax one region. And this is the important part because this is how you draw more cards. You can tax up to four adjacent cards of the same color. So, at the end of my turn here, let's say this is the way my, this is the way this looks. I can take four yellow cards because the wetland counts as a pasture and a river. I can take four yellow or I can take three blue cards because the forest brook counts. Notice this port does not count as a land. Only the special lands do. A building doesn't count. Buildings give you special abilities. Land give you more cards. And so it's up to you to decide which of those is more important. And then the forest brook here counts as a forest, so I, I could take three green. Or I could take one red. 
And you say, well, why won't you take four yellow? Because you want to have cards of different colors. The reason you want to have cards of different colors is because as the game is progressing, you are trying to get first get one of these in your hand, but there's, there's some in every color deck, a church. Yay! When you build a church, it costs one of each color. So you need one of each color in your hand, and you have this, and you'll put a church out. Later on in the game, you have to have a church out first. If you get two of every color, then you basically convert your church into a cathedral, and you win the game. There are other ways to win the game. I believe one of these yellow cards I played earlier, uh, yeah, one of these cards here, allowed you to win the game by having uh, an alternate victory condition. But before we go any farther, so you can win the game through one of those alternate victory conditions or through basically playing a cathedral, which is the way most games will end. Before we go, I want to talk about knights. There's a lot of cards in your hand that are knights. Yay! Now you can play these on your turn if you want to during the action phase. And you can see that knights have costs, but knights have two different costs. See, this knight here costs, this rebellious knight costs one yellow or he costs a blue and a yellow. It's your choice to pay either one. When you play knight, you have two choices. You can either place them in your own thing, and when they're placed there, they protect the cards that they're next to. Those cards cannot be attacked by enemy knights. If, and see, for example, him, when protecting, whenever an action would make you discard cards from your hand, discard one less card. So you gotta be, you gotta be careful. Each of the knights has different special abilities. Or you can attack an opponent. You can play a knight next to them, and basically kill one of their things, and then knight goes away. You can use a knight to attack an opponent, which is why having knights down to protect your important cards and good cards is good. Knights can't attack churches or cathedrals. However, if you notice here, if you pay the extra cost, you can attack your opponent with a knight and then place it in your thing as a defense. So it's really useful to be able to pay that extra cost because then you can use it both to attack and defend. So there's very much interaction, a lot of going back and forth, and there's also event cards that attack each other. And that's basically how you play the game. You know, I, I very much enjoyed this game. You know, when I, and I got it, I looked at it and I thought, oh great, you know, another one of these heavy Race for the Galaxy slash Gore to Rome, you know, style games. I, I, you know, I'm really looking forward to it. And it, it's not that heavy. It's not that deep, but I still like it a lot. I like the fact how you tax, and sometimes you're sitting there going, I really want a red card, but I don't want to tax that one red area. And or you have a, you know, you, you want to make your red lands bigger, your yellow lands bigger, and, and you don't want to give up the cards that you have in your hand for that. So there are tough decisions to make for the game, and the decks play very differently. And like I said, very much does a good knowledge of what's in the decks is going to help you as you progress throughout the game. But hey, it's a lot of fun. I like it. I would recommend that you check it out. Uh, I, I, I wish the packaging was a little bit better, but hey, there's four small tuck boxes holding all the cards inside, and it, and it works well enough for what it is. Um, but it's certainly fairly unique, nothing groundbreaking, but one of those games that kind of straddles the same kind of um, uh, weight that Ticket to Ride or other medium weight games, and this is a game I think that will get a lot of play because of it. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.